we're back with another episode of Axiom After Work. I'm your host, Crystal Floyd, and I'm super excited to be joined by Juan Bassetta. Juan, thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me, Crystal. Before we get started, tell me a little bit about what you do at Axiom and how long you've been here. The title is uh, Industry Solutions Director, and I work with the Data and Identity Solutions team trying to help uh, all of our accounts to become smarter uh, and better on all things related to identity resolution and data enhancement. And I also work with uh, all the sales teams in order to make sure we visit client sites and we tell the whole story about Axiom and all of the things we can do for these brands. Um, so I'm being with Axiom for about Eight and a half months now, so I'm still fairly new, but I've been in ad tech for about 20 years, and Axiom was one of my clients uh, as I've been to other companies. So I'm very familiar with the company, love the company, and I made friends uh, within the company uh, while I was not an employee. And as soon as there was uh, room for me to jump in, I didn't hesitate for a second. <laughs> well, we're certainly glad to have you. So now let's talk Iron Man. Tell us a little bit about that. What is it and how did you get into Iron Man and marathons? Yeah, so Iron Man is a triathlon. Uh, it's a brand, basically. It's a company that organizes uh, triathlons all around the world. And the Iron Man consists on first, you do a 2.4 mile swim that can be in an ocean, a river, on a lake, depending on, you know, which race uh, you're going to go to. Then it's a 112 uh, mile back ride. So that's a lot of miles uh, on a bicycle. All this is nonstop. So basically you transition from the water to the bike and you need to do that in like, you know, 45 seconds. So, you know, there's no time to feel tired from swimming before jumping on the bike. Once you take off on the bike, it's going to be about five to six hours uh, riding your bicycle. Uh, so you have another 45 seconds to actually put your running shoes on and run a full 26.2 mile marathon uh, to finish uh, with the race. Uh, there's a total time that you have to complete the race of 17 hours. It usually takes me around 10 uh, to complete it. And that takes a lot of training. That's impressive. So we're going from swimming to biking for 112 miles and then a run. How a 26.2 mile run. 26.2 miles. How do you train for that? What does that training schedule look like? Uh, so my training schedule uh, is fun to put it in, in words. <laughs> so I wake up very early every day and uh, I train for about two hours. And then uh, I, you know, I'm an Axiom person, so uh, I put my Axiom uh, hat and I work uh, through the day. And when, whenever I'm done with work, I'm going to train for about uh, also two hours before passing out and uh, repeating on the next day. So that's uh, seven days a week, no days off, uh, every single day, uh, including weekends. Four hours a day of training. Yes. I would imagine yes. you would have to condition your body pretty good to to keep up um, with the magnitude of the, the stresses that are on your body. That's impressive. That's definitely impressive. Thank you. So what about your diet? Do you have to follow a strict diet? Uh, I should. I, I got to <laughs> tell you, I should. But uh, I think one of the pleasures in life, at least for me, is to, uh, I get to eat whatever I want. Uh, no guilt, no... <laughs> consequences and uh, I really enjoy food so in my case I do not follow a specific diet uh, but I make sure you know there are also fun parts uh, on my day so I can eat a, a gigantic burger or whatever I want yeah I like I really like food so you've mentioned that you know you've done this for how many years have you done have you been active in Ironmans and marathons uh, probably close to 20 years, so it's been a while. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I started with running uh, right out of the military. Uh, you know, wanted to stay in shape. And uh, 
I started running. I signed up for a 5K race first. I loved it. Uh, I was single back in the day, so I thought it would be a great way to actually meet meet people. Uh, <laughs> then I signed up for a 10K and then a half marathon and then a marathon, and I got hooked. Uh, it was it, it was a lot of fun uh, to be able to compete against yourself and mm. getting better, not just physically, but also mentally, because endurance sports uh, requires... Uh, a lot of mental strength as well, not just physical. Yeah. And your brain is going to tell you, oh, come on, please stop. Let's let's stop. Let, yeah. Let's go home. Uh, this is painful. Why, what are we doing here? Uh, so, you know, it takes years to convince your brain that, you know, you're on a mission right. and <laughs> you're there to, com to complete it. I often hear them say it's me versus me because that's the biggest, the biggest enemy is fighting your own negative thoughts. I'm like, yep, I'm tired. <laughs> it's time to, time to stop. So let's talk about, so you've been in this for 20, over 20 years. Uh, what about your family? Do you, do you, does your family participate in any of these marathons or, or events or this activity with you? Yes. And, and I think family is a big component when it comes to spending so many hours focused on this thing, uh, having the support and making sure you also make time uh, to be with your family, which is, you know, for me, at least it's going to be my main pillar. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what keeps everything together. I think doing that makes a whole lot of difference. Uh, having your family support uh, is it, it means a lot. But having said that, my wife uh, is also a marathoner. So we're all crazy in this household. <laughs> uh, so we're all training every day. Uh, I think that also helps in terms of understanding each other. Uh, you know, sometimes we're tired, cranky. Uh, it happens. Uh, yeah. But it's fun to be with someone that shares your same passion. Uh, because again, it's going to make those things a, a lot easier. And we try to be there and cheer for each other's race, uh, whenever we're not competing actually against each other, which, uh, unfortunately my wife, uh, has the bigger tally and she keeps beating me at races, uh, <laughs> but we do compete against each other every once in a while. So there's nothing wrong with a little friendly competition, you know? Now, one, tell me about a moment that you are really, really proud of. Um, I think my finishing my first Ironman, uh, there was a moment where you know, I cried a lot after crossing the finish line. I couldn't believe what I just did. Uh, and everything that happened in such a short amount of time, again, short amount of time, it was 12 hours back in the day. Uh, but it was still, it felt like a short amount of time and a lot of effort. I signed up for that race two months after I heard, before, two months before the race, sorry. Uh, I signed up for that race two months before uh, the actual race. So I didn't have a bike. I was a runner then. So, you know, I, I was okay with running. And I have been swum in probably 20 years. So I had two months to prepare for a full triathlon uh and that was the biggest challenge for me yeah. to you know understand that i was pretty much on a suicide mission <laughs> that it, it was going to hurt a lot yeah. and i was doing something that almost no coach wanted to take me because they said like you need more time mm -hmm. uh so finishing my first ironman with a great time and uh, with such a feeling of pride mm -hmm. uh that was probably my major achievement in the sport so far. I can imagine signing up two months before the actual event. So that required some pretty intensive training and, yes. and dedication. So I, you should be very proud of yourself to finish in 12 hours. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. what about, so have you participated all over the world where have you raced? Where are some of the, the different locations that you participated in marathons or Ironmans? So I've done uh, a race, whether it's just running or uh, triathlons, pretty much on every continent, but Australia. So I've raced in 
crazy places, China, I raised in, you know, all over Europe as well, all over the United States. I'm originally from South America, I'm Argentinian, and I've been in the U.S. for 10 years. So I've also raised all over Latin America a lot before moving to the U.S. And then once uh, I moved to the U.S., uh, I was able to travel a lot more. And uh, yeah, I've been everywhere, everywhere you can think of, a lot of countries. Racing around the world. So now you have to tell me, what was your favorite race? My favorite race, I will have to say I'm biased. I live <laughs> in New York City and my favorite race is the New York City Marathon, which mm -hmm. I stopped doing standalone marathons uh, a long time, but New York City Marathon, think about 70,000 people starting the same distance together. Uh, and, you know, you're going to run a full 26.2 mile marathon with 70,000 people in it. Wow. Room. Two and a half million people cheering for you mm -hmm. through the streets of New York City. That is, and again, I've did a lot of marathons, but <laughs> nothing compares to the New York City Marathon. Definitely my favorite race by far. Wow, that is amazing. 70,000 people? Yes. Definitely impressive. So let's talk, let's let's do the roll call. How many races have you actually participated in, including, um, you know, the Ironmans, the triathlons? What, what are we looking at? What is that metric looking like? Uh, I don't think I have a, an exact count, but what I can tell you is I'm probably within three digits. And wow. it'll be close to 30 something triathlons, all kinds of uh, different distances. You have different distances. It's not just the Ironman. Ironman is the longest. Mm. Uh, it, but yeah, so probably, you know, 30 something marathons. Uh, and then, you know, half marathons, I don't even know, probably like 70, 10 Ks, wow. you name it. So yeah, the, well within the three digits. Uh, but I've lost count like six, seven years ago. Wow, that's amazing. So what would you tell the the one 20 years ago? What advice would you have for the one that was just starting out as a beginner um, in marathons or triathlons or Ironmans? What advice would you give the younger one? Um, what I miss the most about that younger one uh, is his beginner spirit. I will go back and say, never forget why you started doing this because sometimes, you know, life happens and sometimes you have a super busy day at work. Sometimes, uh, you are going to feel tired. Sometimes your body, you know, as, as you grow older, your body is going to complain and it's going to tell you not just your brain, but your body's going to hurt and tell you, Oh, come on, really? Uh, so, I think that having that energy of wanting to grow mentally and physically uh, mm -hmm. through an almost impossible objective is what drove me to start with this and is sometimes what brings me back to the place that I need to be mentally in order to keep a healthy balance between family, work, and this hobby. And I think that's a perfect way to end. Never forget why, the why, why you started. Oh, and by the way, my next Ironman is in 10 days from now. Uh, so I am very excited, ready, uh, and I can't wait to uh, go, and, go out and race again. So thank you so much for having me today. It's been fun. And uh, yeah, thank you for doing this. Well, one, we look forward to hearing about you in your next Ironman, Knock It Out of the Park. Again, thank you for joining us for Axiom After Work, and we'll see you next time. Hey, Crystal. I told you I will send you a video after I finish. It wasn't the race I was looking for, but I finished, which is what's important. Never give up.